Hello, welcome to Soulprint Intuitive Tarot. My name is Cindy. You'll be seeing this on January 21st. Wow, last day of January, or the middle of January already. Wow, how does how does this happen? Man, time's going so fast. So, uh, just one little quick house, well, two um, little quick housekeeping things. One, I got your feedback on the shorter videos. And I agree, so I'm really going to do what I can to keep them between sort of, I don't know, 20 and 35 minutes. Um, I, you know, I find it that the long ones, I just sort of, maybe it's because I'm just sort of tired of it, but I tend not to listen to them. I also tend not to listen to collaboratives where there's like a lot of chit chat going on. Uh, so thank you for your feedback. Um, secondly... The lady who I told to chill out on the um, message from Spirit. So for those of you who may not have seen, on Tuesday, there were two recordings put out. One was called um, Don't Lose Hope, and that was the political one. And then shortly after that, I released one called Message from Spirit with Love. And this was just sort of like literally um, a bit of a pep talk, a bit of an insight to um, kind of where we're at energetically, where the planet is, where we are as a civilization, and sort of what our options are going forward. Um, so there's that. But at the beginning of the second video, I told um, a person to chill out because um, she had just reacted a little strongly to a confusion from the previous video. And while I appreciated all of you, who thought that the chill out phrase was funny and enjoyed it and may actually start incorporating it into your world. Um, I, I gotta say, I was a little sad by um, some of the sort of um, attacks that went on. They weren't attacks, but they were snippy messages sort of directed at her. And listen, while I appreciate every one of you defending me when you feel the need to, the woman who had made that comment reached out to me immediately and said she was so, so sorry. She had been recovering from an illness and her, her head was a little fuzzy. And you know, sometimes we all type when our head is fuzzy and kind of before we think. So let's keep that in mind, right? And it was just too ironic that it was a video about everybody functioning from higher consciousness and, you know, doing everything we can um, as, as just humans and as light workers. Um, and that's said. Okay, so here we go. Um, I want to take a look at sort of two things. One is the fact that the Supreme Court um, denied um, the what's the um, mandate or whatever it was that they had in place that that was making uh, corporations over a hundred people. Uh, ensure that everybody was mandated. The court denied that. And that Neil Gorsuch guy running around without a mask on because he thinks that, you know, getting COVID is an occupational hazard. What a goof. Um, and and sort of my ear, it sits right beside him. Sorry if I said that wrong. It sits right beside him and she has a compromised immune system. Like, honestly, what is, like, where did human... Compassion, concern, courtesy. Where is that gone as a result of the um, <clears throat> the sort of stranglehold that the Republicans, um, you know, by Trump, but honestly, in some ways, I blame Mitch McConnell more than Trump um, for what's going on in the Senate and, and the, politically, right? I mean, Trump wasn't a politician. He was a chaos maker. So I want to take a look at that. <clears throat> but I also want to take a quick look at the fact that the Supreme Court also um, denied um, Trump's request that the um, National Archives not be allowed to release any of his uh, papers. And what was really interesting is they made, there was sort of a footnote that said, even, even if Trump had been the incumbent president, even if he was currently in office now, they would have ruled the same way because he just doesn't have the right to restrict sort of 100% of papers from being released from the National Archives. So that was really interesting. So those what I'm going to look, take a look at. Um, and I actually have an appointment right after this, so I'm going to skip along pretty quickly. So let's take a look at 
um, the whole mandate thing regarding, you know, that little virus that's out there. Come on down. I have a question. <clears throat> okay. Um... Conservative, conservative court health decisions, conservative court health decisions, conservative court health decision. Um, I'm being very careful what words I use and don't use because they are monitoring these um, recordings a lot more closely than they have in the past. And so I want, and that and goes for your comments. Please be careful with your comments because part of the reason that this channel works is because you know what we're kind and gentle and and um we try to stay informative so let's be careful okay page of pentacles ten of cups the fool two of cups the devil and the eight of cups Okay, so what this is saying is that the stipulations and the, you know, mandates and sort of thing that were put in place, were put in place with, with no political agenda. They were put in place with the health and welfare and well-being of, you know, of the citizens of the country, recognizing that when you have a large corporation and you have a lot of people um, kind of compressed into a limited amount of space, it, you know, things get passed along from person to person. I mean, it, it doesn't have to be the big pandemic thing. It could be a cold. It could be a flu bug. So, you know, there really wasn't a political agenda behind it, even though for some people they may have thought it was. But what has happened basically is there are people who have chosen to you know, fight back against the very thing that would be um, helpful to their health. And again, I'm not making any um, comment on people who choose not to, but <clears throat> I have to tell you from my perspective, unless there is a medical reason, I, I have a hard time understanding why not, but that's just me. <clears throat> so what has happened? <clears throat> make no mistake, is that there is a partnership that has uh, been formed, and I almost want to call it an unholy alliance here, um, between the courts and the very conservative Republican agendas. And, you know, I'm not going to say it's like a conspir conspiracy because it's not. But what it is is the conservatives, um, the, the Republicans finally, finally got into a position of power and they're going to do everything they can because, you know, that doesn't happen to them very often, right? You know, normally they only have one of the, the three elements. So what happened is they flooded the courts um, and lower courts and Supreme Courts with those very conservative judges. The other thing, you know what I want to say, it was really interesting. It was an eight to nine decision and the only person who voted for Trump was Clarence Thomas. Now, isn't that an interesting thing considering, you know, I'm just saying where his wife was on January 6th. Isn't that just interesting? I'm leaving it there. But so what is happening is you have people who are literally walking away from um, walking away from that which is going to help them. But in the long run, in the long run, the people who were choosing to listen to view, views other than scientific are ultimately going to be the ones that suffer the greatest heartbreak, frankly, in the greatest numbers. And two, um, those people who are doing it for political reasons are ultimately going to continue to, you know, they're, they're making headway right now. Ultimately, I don't believe it's going to serve them. I think ultimately it's going to backfire. But for right now, you have people making choices and those choices 
you know, kind of creating a hardship. You know, ultimately, it's going to, those who get it are, you know, get the, the vaccines, etc., are going to be healthier and be able to fight this off better. Those who choose not to put themselves at much, much higher risk. And, you know, this is the thing that's so interesting, right? Um, I know a few people who, for medical reasons, cannot at this point take that light saving, in, most, in some cases, um, injection. But you know what? They are the ones who are so hyper careful. I mean, we got people out there who haven't stepped outside their, their door for months and months simply because it's not safe. The ones who want it and can't get it, um, they're the ones who, you know, we don't have to worry about. They're, they're taking, um, you know, all of the safety precautions on steroids. <laughs> but um, it's the other ones who just, still refuse to um, listen. All right, let's take a look at the sort of ramifications of um, that ruling that came down yesterday. Um, and it was a very short one. Apparently, it was only like a, para a paragraph long. Now, apparently, um, the, the court below, sorry, the court below had put out a 16-page ruling. Um, and so I guess the Supreme Court really didn't have anything to say except, you know, denied, right? So I just want to take a look at the, oh my God, the implications of that. Hold on again. Okay, I'm going to stop shuffling because obviously these cards are ready to talk. So one quick one of these. And here we go. Um, National Archives release of documents, National Archives release of documents, National Archives release of documents. <laughs> you know, some days the cards are just like brilliant. So, they are going to allow the 1-6 committee to move forward. They are going to now get a treasure trove of information that is going to really, really paint a very clear picture and um, continue to identify the significance of the roles certain people played. And that's important because then that information on law likelihood goes to the Justice Department, etc., etc. This illumination um, that is going to happen as a result of these documents are going to shed a very, very bright light on what was going on behind the scenes, what the thought process are, what people were thinking, um, you know, what they were actually trying to do or get away with. Justice is coming. So not only is the report or the influx of documentation going to really, really help the select committee, um, you know, get it together, like really have a clear perspective of what went on, but it's also going to really fill out um, the information that can then get sent forward. That, this, this is ultimately going to create a strength within the committee. It, it's going to increase the strength of what, um, they are able to do and they are able to accomplish. So we've got the Queen of Swords here. So again, you're talking about, you know, the powers of this is this is generally speaking, the, the Queen of Swords here is about the law. It is about sorry. I'm sorry, we're just having a slight technical problem with an appliance in this house. Okay. <clears throat> The Queen of Swords is representative of a uh, of the courts as a whole. Maybe it's Lady Justice. Maybe it's the strong arm of the law. Maybe, um, you know, aside from the fact that the National Archives um, got had to release all their information, and that's going to really, really benefit the committee, this could very well also be Tish James, who has just submitted a very, very long, um, very detailed um, explanation for why she wants the um, Trump family in to give, um, I don't think it's depositions, I think she's just talking about some, you know, some information she wants to talk to them. 
But apparently, I didn't know this, apparently when Eric Trump went to talk to her, because he has, um, he invoked his right, his Fifth Amendment right, 500 times. <clears throat> A lot of the delay tactics that have been going on to try to drag things out, um, some of those things are really coming to a bit of an abrupt end, and they're not coming becoming to um, an abrupt an ending that is in a certain family's favor. Just as simple as that. <clears throat> There's a lot of stuff coming out. Um, you can expect some back and forth squabbles, but honestly, the money story, um, the behind the the um, behind the scenes sort of um, maneuvering and manipulating and and honestly sometimes bullying, um, is going to not paint a very nice picture, and ultimately. It might take a couple more months, and let's not forget, they're going. I think they're going to absolutely go ahead with these primetime uh, Senate hearings, so or not Senate hearings, the committee hearings, so that the average person has an opportunity to at least watch and see what was going on, get some of the answers that they didn't have. And um, that's going to move ahead, maybe even a little faster than some of us are anticipating or expecting. Ultimately, though, the, the release of documents and the the energy pressing in is going to move things along in, in all areas. Okay, it's going to move it along with the the New York thing. It's going to move it along with the um, the hearings. Okay, so good news and here comes judgment. Look at that. So okay, so this looks as if the release. Of the documents um, is really going to be a super beneficial thing. It's going to provide a lot of information and insight and guidance. All right. Thank you very, very much for all of your um, support. Welcome new subscribers. I'm very grateful you're here. Story to Russia. I got to get going. All right. Take care. I'll see you next week. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.